My name is Yuni Wu, and this topic is about the art of ancient Egypt, specifically the Book of the Dead by Hunifer and the Sphinx of Hatshepsut. was a scribe, or someone who copies documents in Egypt during the 19th dynasty. He is the artist of the Book of the Dead, which was an ancient Egyptian record of spells and incantations that people would use to assist them on their journey to the afterlife. It was made around 1275 BC on painted papyrus, a type of paper made from a papyrus plant. Currently, this artwork is located in the British Museum of London, England. The specific page we are going to analyze is The Last Judgment Before Osiris. It teaches that in order to have a successful journey to the afterlife, one must lead a righteous life and be respectful to the gods. At the very top left, we can see Hunifer in front of the judges of the dead, or gods, trying to convince them that he had an honorable life. Below that, Anubis, the Egyptian god of the dead, or mummification, is escorting Hunifer by the hand to a scale. Anubis is known for having a jackal head, and in his other hand is an ankh, a symbol for eternal life. Next, Anubis is adjusting the scale. On the left, there is the heart of the dead, and the other side has an ostrich feather. The feather is from Ma'at, who sits at the top of the scale. She represents truth, justice, and divine order. We can see that her feather is heavier, which means that Hunifer has passed the test since he lived a virtuous life. If his heart was heavier than Amit, the monster next to Anubis would devour him. Amit is a goddess who has the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion, and the backside of a hippopotamus. Next to Amit is Thoth, another Egyptian deity with the head of an ibis, a type of bird. He is the god of the moon and writing. He records what happens with the scale and hunifer. Then Horus, the god of kingship and the sky with a falcon head, introduces Hunifer to his father Osiris. Osiris sits on a grand throne with a lotus, which is a symbol of eternal life. On top of the lotus, those are Horus's children that represent north, south, east, and west. Then we see Horus again near Osiris's head, portrayed as a falcon with an eye. Behind Osiris stands Isis and Nephthys. Isis is the goddess of healing and magic, who is Osiris's wife and sister. Nephthys is also Osiris's sister and is the goddess of the air. Lastly, we can see hieroglyphics all around the page as well as the symbol of eternal life, the Ankh, drawn in multiple places. Hunifer hopes that this script would be followed after he dies so that he can gain immortality in the afterlife, and that's why the Book of the Dead was found in his tomb. This book reveals that the ancient Egyptians believed that honorable lives would be rewarded after death, and how their art style has changed over time. Hatshepsut was one of the most famous and powerful female pharaohs in ancient Egyptian history. Back then, she lived in a patriarchal society, so her ascension to the throne was heavily controversial. She was the daughter of Thutmose I and married Thutmose II, her half-brother at the age of 12, since that was common back then. She was expected to produce a son who would be the next pharaoh, but had a daughter instead. Thutmose II died young, so the next person in line was Thutmose III, her stepson. However, he was only an infant, so Hatshepsut became his regent for him. However, she became pharaoh or co-ruler with Thutmose III. It was probably because of her ambition that she seized this opportunity to become one of the most powerful people in the ancient world. Her subjects were skeptical about having a female pharaoh, but she defended herself by saying that her father, Thutmose I, made her his successor before he died. 
She ordered to make the statues and paintings of her look more masculine because she wanted to present herself in a way that would show her people that she could be as strong as the male leaders before her. Surprisingly to most people back then, her rule was prosperous since she made many buildings and expanded Egyptian trade. One of the sculptures made of her was the Sphinx of Hatshepsut from around 1479 to 1458 BC. Currently, it is located in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. It is a granite sculpture depicting a sphinx with Hatshepsut's face. A sphinx represents many things, mainly power and protection. She is wearing a headcloth and royal beard, making her look like a male pharaoh. According to the book or biography, The Woman Who Would Be King by Kara Cody, women leaders throughout history have been looked down upon in the past, their ambition being used against them, since they're portrayed as dangerous and scheming, that they would be the ruin of everyone around her. However, there was no record of Hatshepsut ever murdering or stealing from anyone. She had to build herself up to get to be pharaoh. Hatshepsut never got all the credit she deserved for a long time, since the pharaohs who came after took it all. Historians speculate that Thutmose III, the pharaoh who ruled after she died, tried to erase any evidence of her existence. Why? Most likely to make the world forget that there was ever a female leader. But Hatshepsut wouldn't be forgotten so easily. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.